Okay, welcome back to Woodworking with Wes. Today is our final segment on our Blueprint to Build series. Let's have a little bit of review about what we did last time and then we're going to make our frame and frameless cabinets. On our last segment, we did my shop drawings. Remember we talked about how my shop drawing, just a crude drawing, gives me the information that I need to go and cut out. Now, here's our frameless cabinet. Here's the parts we need to cut. Here's our face frame cabinet, our face frame parts, and our cabinet parts. We're going to start with our frameless cabinet. We're going to cut the parts, we're going to band them, and we're going to build them. I want to say one thing in advance before we go to the table saw. These cabinets are 24 inches deep. As I stand here on my bench, if I build a 24 inch deep cabinet, I'm this hard, this high, and it's going to be hard for my videographer to really show you what I'm doing. I'm going to build these cabinets only 15 inches deep so that you can get a better, better view as I assemble as to what I'm doing. It's, this is just for the video purpose so that you can see better, understand that this cabinet really is supposed to be 24 inches deep, but we're making it 15. So let's go to the table saw. We're getting ready to cut out our parts off of our cut list. We're using 3 quarter inch white melamine as our material for our box. We've put on our 80 tooth melamine blade and we're just going to go ahead and go through and cut our pieces. We'll have you just watch as I cut it out and then we'll be banding and assembling our frameless cabinet. Okay, let's walk through what parts these are. First off, remember we're making our cabinet only 15 inches deep for videoing. So here's our sides, 30 and a half, and then typically they would be deeper. Our bottom, 25 and a half wide. Let's go back, let's refer back to our shop drawing. Our shop drawing. Two sides, 30 and a half, those are these size pieces. One piece. 25 and one half for the bottom for the floor of the cabinet right here and then I remember you remember I mentioned that I st put stretchers the stretches are five inches here's two of them and I do it this way because it's easier to hang on to when I'm banding we'll cut this back to five inches when I'm done I've cut this ten and a half inches we'll band to both sides and then there'll be a third stretcher and this is just an extra piece and then, I don't know if you remember, but I will tell you that I put a, a hanging cleat in the back that I don't list in my cutout. This is my hanging cleat piece. I cut it seven inches wide. I band both sides. I take a three inch piece, uh, cut a three inch piece off of it, leaving me three and seven eighths, and I nail it together in a right angle, and that makes my hanging cleat. You'll see that as we assemble and that becomes my hanging cleat. So let's go ahead now, go to the bander, band our pieces. Now, if you don't have a bander or don't have access to a bander, um, iron-on banding works just as well. This is going to be a white cabinet, so we're going to use white banding, but you can iron on your white banding. Um, if it was a uh, stain and lacquer piece, you would iron on your wood banding or go to your banding machine and, and do the wood banding. But banding is something that you, could, you can do without a banding machine if you don't have one. If you have access to a banding machine, it makes it very nice and convenient. So let's band next. back at the bench 
We have banded our pieces for our cabinet, and we've cut our stretchers and our and our hanging cleat into sizes. But I wanted to talk a little bit more about the banding. I banded on my machine on the uh, the banding machine just to give you an idea of what it's like. That's a production piece of machinery. That's very expensive, and if you're not a production cabinet shop, that's not beyond a lot of people's reach as far as finances. Before that was available to me, this is what I did. I ironed on, and when I talk about iron-on banding, your banding comes pre-glued. You just take your banding and lay it on here. And when I say iron, I mean iron. You just take your iron, lay it on there, run your iron back and forth, and it warms up that pre-glued edge, sticks it to your melamine. I always take a J-roller, roll it down, and there you're banded. You have to clean your edges and clean off your banding and stuff because it gets a little dirty, And but you're banded. And I did that for years before I had a big bander. So that's how it's done. We're back here to the bench with our pieces all banded. Before we start the assembly, you always have to clean your uh, edges. And I'm just going to show you how I do it. I just take a file. I lay my edge up there. I just file the edges like that. And that cleans off the banding edge. It makes it nice and smooth. And then if there's any residue glue or anything like that, like there's a little residue glue line there, I just take some lacquer thinner and a paper towel and I rub that down and clean it up and then my pieces are all nice and white and clean. I'll go ahead and get that done and then we'll assemble. We've now cleaned and filed and, and uh, washed our panels with lacquer thinner to clean up all the dirt and everything. We're ready to go. First thing I always do is nail together my hanging cleat. Remember I told you I made a seven inch piece, cut a three inch piece off of it, and the other piece that I use it makes the, the right angle. Let's show how I nail that together. Here's my three inch piece. Here's my three and three, a uh, three and seven eighths leftover piece. I just lay it on like that. I use my inch and three quarter wide crown stapler to staple it together. Okay, there's my hanging cleat, the right angle, all nailed together. This is the top of the cabinet. This is the back of the cabinet. Here's where you would put a screw through to. Um, I mentioned to you that I wore gloves because melamine was really sharp. In the process of getting my stuff clean, I nicked the, the edge of my knuckle and had to put a band-aid on it. Be careful, melamine is sharp. Let's go ahead and finish up on our installation. We start by nailing the cabinets together with an 18 gauge inch and a half nail to line things up. Then I'm just going to go ahead and go through the, 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 install, or the assembly process. We'll stop and mention a couple of things as we go, but uh, first off, we just nail the bottom end, hang cleat, top rail. On one of my videos that I did before where I nailed a cabinet together, I talked about the fact that I used two different types of nail guns. My inch and a quarter, or my inch and a half, 18 gauge nail, I just use it to line up everything to get it in the right place. And then I use an inch and three quarter wide crown staple that actually is the majority of the holding power of my cabinet. So I line it up, then I put my inch and three quarter staples on there, and now I have a good solid cabinet. I've used this method of construction for years. It's a great method, and it's fast. So if you're in a production situation like I am every day, this is a great way to put cabinets together, very fast, very efficient, and strong. 
We have the initial part of our box put together. This is our floor, we've got it nailed in. We've got our hanging cleat nailed in and our top stretcher. We're getting ready to put the two stretchers in and as you remember on our print, on our, on our drawing, we have a space of five and a half and 11 and 11 and these are just stretchers in between. Being as I do this all the time, I made me a little jig. This is a five and a half inch jig. Lips over the side of my cabinet right there. And then I just bring my stretcher in. Put it up against my little jig. And there's my spacing. When I do my second one, I just start there. And my next stretcher. And that gives me my stretchers nailed in at the right interval without measuring each time. And also keeps them square to the face of my cabinet because my drawer guide rides on the top of the stretcher. We'll go ahead and nail those in and this cabinet will basically be done. I use my little jig to draw me a line. I guess I better center that a little better. I'm okay. And now I'll put my staples in along the line and this will be held with nails and staples. Just like that. Okay, here is our basic base cabinet three. So base drawer three, you can see three drawers. And that's how I would build them all the time as I would do my kitchen cabinet work. Um, based upon our layout, this is what would go in the corner next to the filler. There would be a filler here. And then um, I think we had the sink on the other side of this. Uh, don't remember. No, dishwasher was on the other side. It started anyway, but um, base drawer three. This is how it looks. Drawer guides would go in. We'd put a back on it, obviously, before we deliver, but this is how it goes together. Let's build the face frame. It's different. We're on our second cabinet. This is the face frame style cabinet for our corner build. Again, we drew that out. This is a two-part build because we have to build face frame first and then build the cabinet. We've listed all our parts here. We've listed the size of our cabinet. Remember, we were going to incorporate the corner filler in this one. And we've got our spacing all worked out. We have milled our wood, our solid wood for our face frame, to 13 sixteenths and put a straight edge on our jointer. The reason we did 13 sixteenths, we want it to end up being as close to three quarters of an inch as we can based on measurement of making our cabinet the correct depth. So we've milled it to 13 sixteenths. We're going to go and go to our table saw. We're going to rip our uh, widths and then we're taking our table saw sled and cutting our lengths and then we'll bring it back to the bench and put our face frame together. sanded my edges of my face frame on my edge sander, but if you don't have an edge sander, just a good block with a piece of sandpaper on it, and sand like this to take off your saw blade marks, works great. Very easy. Okay, let's drill the holes on our Craig boring machine, and we'll put the face frame together. We're getting ready to assemble our face frame now. We've got everything to size. We've gone over and drilled at our Craig boring machine. I want to show you a little trick 
that I use to make sure that I don't get lefts and rights mixed up. Basically, when you look at our shop drawing, we have a one and a quarter side on one side and a four and a quarter side on the other side. And the way I put them together to make sure I don't end up with my sides wrong is I lay it out on my bench the way it's supposed to look to me and then I just flip it over. And I build from top to bottom just like that. And so I would start now the top is to me and so when it stands up it would be just right. And that's how I keep my lefts and rights right. Uh, correct, I should say, lefts and rights, correct, uh, is I just build it upside down facing me. Works out really well. We're going to go ahead and put this together now. We lay it on the bench. We clamp glue and clamp our joints on the bench. That holds them good and flat. Just a little bit of glue on there and put there. Clamp that down good and tight to my bench. Make sure your joints line up the way they're supposed to. Square drive face frame screws. And there's our first joint together. Just like that. Let go, let go. All right. That's the way our face frame joints will look. We're going to go ahead and complete this rest of the way through and get our face frame put together. Okay, here's our face frame all done with our filler as part of the face frame and remember corner filler three by three to allow drawer faces to pass one another in the corner but here's our face frame portion now to the table saw and cut the panels that this will deal to We just finished cutting our pieces that go to our face frame cabinet. One thing that I forgot to mention and I would like to stress always is safety. I have a tendency to not pay attention to telling you about that because I've done so many years I just cut my things and I don't think about it because I've, you know, 45 years and all my fingers are the right size. But anyway, pay attention, follow your safety instructions. Be safe on the table saw. It's a dangerous piece of equipment if you're not. Always, always, always be safe on woodworking equipment. We're getting ready to assemble the cabinet part of our face frame cabinet. These are our sides. This is our bottom. I made another hanging cleat, very similar to the last one. It's the same kind of deal. Here's our stretchers on this one. They're not as wide and they're not banded because they go behind the cross pieces of our face frame. As you remember, this is our face frame. There'll be a stretcher behind each rail. Styles, rails, remember? So anyway, we're going to go ahead, assemble the box, and then we'll put the face frame on it. And that's the basic construction of a face frame cabinet. First, the box. <music> see the basic box construction for our face frame is very very similar. We're getting ready to nail in our stretchers now and the stretchers don't go according to the same 
jigs that I'd made before. So I marked a little mark here where the top of our stretcher will go, which will line up with our face frame. And in order to get our stretcher to do just right, I have this little block, and that will help hold our stretcher right angle to our box. We'll just clamp it on there, clamp it to our mark. Oop, we moved it. And then we'll put our stretcher in here and put it up against our jig, and that will hold our stretcher square. Just like that. And that's what we'll do next. Have the box portion nailed together. We have our face frame built that we had already done and now the face frame just goes on our box just like that and the way we line it up is we line it up flush with the bottom, flush with the sides, flush with the stretchers and nail it right on through the face and then we putty and sand and then it will go to the paint shop and that's how this cabinet works. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, you got to glue it first. Okay, and I always start at the bottom and in the corners. Make sure my bottom is flush, make sure my corners are flush. Give it one nail there. Work my way across the bottom. And I work up the side, keeping my side flush. Just nail through the stretchers. There your face frame is nailed on. You come back with your putty. Putty your nail holes and your face frame joints. Just like that. And then you would just sand out your face, take it to the paint shop, and it's ready to paint. And there's your face frame style cabinet for your base unit. It's been great to have you in the cabinet shop today learning frameless and face frame style construction for the same cabinet. Same thing we learned when we drew our working drawing from our layout sheet. These are the types of things that I love to be able to teach when I'm working here with you on woodworking with woods. See you next time.